Welcome to the China Partner Event of uh, in 2017. I'm Brian Young, uh, the Senior Editor of uh, uh, Script in Pharma Intelligence. Uh, today uh, with me is uh, uh, Mark Noguchi. Um, Mr. Noguchi is uh, uh, the Senior uh, Head of the, the part, uh, Business Development uh, for Roche. And uh, welcome to the interview. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, uh, first, uh, I would like, uh, Mark, if you can tell us briefly about your partnering event uh, activities in China or as, a, as a overall in Asia Pacific. Thank you very much, Brian. So we have uh, our business development group, our Roche partnering group is a global organization and we are interested in innovation anywhere in the world. We have a presence uh, in many countries, uh, specifically in China we are, or in Asia, we have uh, global staff based uh, in Shanghai and, and Tokyo. Uh, here at China Bio, we're very happy to be here to have uh, an opportunity to interact with uh, the, the Chinese-based uh, biotech and pharma industry uh, companies. From an innovation standpoint, which is what we are interested in, uh, we are pursue compelling science, compelling science no matter the source with respect to uh, something that we believe we can turn into a, a meaningful medicine for patients. Uh, so we are not interested in biosimilars, we are not interested in generics, we are not interested in tweaks on existing molecules. We, uh, are, in, we are interested in science that can turn into a, a therapeutic, a medicine that will make a significant impact on patients. And that's really the basis of our presence here at uh, China Bio this year. Uh, would you uh, please give us some examples of your activities uh, in the recent years? In recent years in, in Asia? Uh, yes. Okay, so uh, we will span everything from early discovery uh, collaborations with academic institutions, uh, the Chinese Academy of Sciences or other universities, uh, through to clinical programs from biotech companies that we can bring right into a global development program uh, for phase one, phase two, phase three studies. Uh, so the whole span of, of, uh, of uh, activities that uh, we will pursue. Uh, we have a number of uh, negotiations ongoing right now in China. Uh, we have a number of partners both in China and Japan and Korea. Uh, so uh, we've been very active uh, with our Asian partners here. Um, I was wondering if uh because there are a lot of other companies, uh, multinational companies are doing maybe the similar things in China. They're also looking for some assets or licensing out or in licensing. What uh, differentiates Roche from other uh, companies? Uh, great, thank you very much. So we appreciate a diverse approach to innovation. Even within the company, we have a research and early development center in South San Francisco that we call Genentech Research and Early Development, or GRED. We have a separate organization that conducts their own uh, approaches to uh, early programs called uh, the Pharma Research and Early Development, or, or Roche Research, uh, based in the rest of the world, in Germany, in Switzerland, in New York, and Shanghai. Uh, as well, we have our colleagues at Chugai Pharmaceuticals in Japan. Each one of these uh, research and early development organizations can work on their own programs. Uh, they choose the targets, they choose the mechanisms and pursue them. So we're interested in diverse approaches and fitting right in with that are various partnering approaches. Uh, partnerships with organizations around the world who again bring a different perspective to discovery, a different perspective to therapeutics, um, science really that uh, can lead to meaningful medicines. And that, that's the, the approach that, uh, that we pursue. Now one could say, gee, a number of companies do that uh, as well. What differentiates Roche? We also uh, take uh, or put a lot of emphasis into what we call um, molecular information or personalized healthcare 2.0 uh, in, our, in our terminology. So advancing uh, medicine through technology. And in this regard, uh, we're interested in technologies uh, coming from, again, anywhere in the world. China is very advanced in terms of information management, information technologies, management of data or computing, um, machine learning, artificial intelligence, lots of advances in China in these uh, computing areas. And we see the future of medicine being based on utilization of data, real world data, real world evidence, or big data as it's sometimes called, along with advances in computing. Uh, be it artificial, as I said, artificial intelligence, um, 
uh, cognitive computing is used uh, by some organizations, uh, and, and therefore we're interested in partnerships in these areas as well, advancing the information technology area. Uh, would you uh, share some um, uh, insight about uh, how you know some changes in China were, were most likely to impact your uh, some some um, you know uh, partnering uh, patterns or strategies uh, in down the road. Yes. So we, like everyone else, we are very excited and interested in the changes, the reforms from a regulatory standpoint that are going on in China. We believe that will help harmonize uh, drug development um, and moving medicines to patients. Um, harmonize China with many parts of the rest of the world, and this is very good, uh, very good. So. Uh, Moving beyond that though, think of the world as a clinical study. In most cases, a clinical study, or we have data access generated from clinical studies, which are controlled with 100 patients, 1,000 patients in specific locations, and that's it. We view a world in the future where the world is providing data, the world is providing information. It, for example, it could be called one big clinical study, and that's real world data information from all sources from and here in China the most uh, biggest population in the world think of all the data that come can come from China and as I said before the advances in technology uh, computer technology here that this is in fact a, a very important location for us to advance our uh, pursuit of new medicines involving access to data and involving uh, technologies. So one big clinical study in the whole world, that's what the future very well may look like. Um, as you mentioned uh, uh, previously about uh, some uh, coverage of this area, new technology uh, by the New York Times and also um, China, as you know, is actually in the uh, overall uh, development environment uh, of uh, Asia Pacific. What would you put China in this overall uh, drug innovation uh, trend in Asia Pacific? With respect to pursuit of what we call personalized healthcare? Yes. Uh, I think very strong with, uh, in positioning in computer technology. Uh, and in fact, some of the references that I cited on our panel yesterday uh, were with respect to the strength in, in uh, artificial intelligence development, for example. And, and data, I think, is a, is a bigger challenge because of the, the uh, perhaps uh, diversity of data approaches that have been used in China in the past. So this is an area that I think needs some development and identification of how we can, in fact, structure the um, patient information, the clinical data from China into such a way that we can apply real-world data approaches. Again, Mark, utilizing the technology side as well. Thanks. Mark, when you're looking for potential partners uh, in the region, what are some key aspects or characteristics are you looking for? I could go through many different characteristics about a company, a university, an investigator, a partner, the characteristics of a, a mechanism, a drug, or, or whatever. <clears throat> but it really comes down to two characteristics. One is, is there compelling science? Do we believe in the science? And the other is, do we believe we can work with the partner? So it comes down to two, really two fairly straightforward aspects, compelling science and uh, an entity, an organization that we believe we can work with uh, well together to advance this science uh, into a medicine. Uh, we do diligence, we look at, uh, validate the science and intellectual property and business cases and all that, that's all fine, but it really comes down to the compelling science that is driving our uh, interest in a partnership. And uh, can you share us what's your next step or what's your next plan in terms of uh, the partnering in uh, China or Asia as well? I think this, our opportunity this week at China Bio provides a great stepping stone uh, to advance our partnering activities in China. We've met with many, many, many companies here over uh, the, the past few days. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us then to pursue individual discussions with those companies looking at specific programs uh, that uh, originate here in China. Uh, and for us, it's very exciting. This is, uh, this is why we partner. This is why we're here. 
Uh, one last question. Since uh, you, uh, the company Roche, uh, you work for, has a very exciting uh, uh, IO immuno uh, immuno oncology uh, candidate, and actually just uh, has uh, approved uh, for cancer. So, what uh, are you when you look at this area IO, um, do you see any new trends or coming from this area? Like uh, sure. The uh, immuno-oncology is an important area, well, for, for patients, for the industry, and as well for us. We have our atezolizumab um, approved in some indications and in the clinic for others. The trend here are clinical collaborations, uh, and we are advancing atezolizumab as a standalone monotherapy treatment, but also combined with many other programs in our portfolio and many other programs at partner companies. So from a partnering standpoint, the challenge is to develop these clinical collaboration partnerships to study atezolizumab with other company uh, products, uh, be it a development stage program or an on-the-market program, uh, to look again for uh, effective treatments for cancer. Thank you very much, Mark.